Hey garden friends. So today we are going to trim some boxwoods. So, okay, here's the story, story time. <laughs> um, I butchered my boxwoods last year and I really have no excuse for myself. So I'll have to insert a picture of when we first moved in here. Um, and as you can see, they are super overgrown, like insanely overgrown. They were so big and ridiculous. And actually, if you come out, you'll probably see that there is one missing. So what had happened was that there was a boxwood framing each side of the door. And I'm assuming that there were also two other boxwoods on this um, right side of the house. I guess if you're looking at the house, it's the right side, um, on the right side of the house. And they must have died or something. And then on the left side, you have a, another boxwood, um, a boxwood that was in the middle was, I ripped it out, and then there was a camilla bush. Camellia, camilla. Um, so I ripped out the middle one because there wasn't anything existing on the right side and I felt like it just looked really off balance. So I thought, well, this will give me space to plant more stuff. This was last year. And then I planted, I planted? I, I plant, I planted a hydrangea um, to f like balance out the Camilla because I'm, I planted an incredible. So hopefully it'll get, unfortunately the Camilla is really big. I don't know, I think I might rip out the Camilla at some point, which I hate to do. But to be honest, even when it blooms, the blooms like get hurt by the frost and they get like, they die and get like, um, how do you say like brown and like almost gooey I think that's something about where it's planted I think honestly it might maybe it's wind maybe it's getting too much wind I'm not sure um anywho so needless to say I butchered my boxwoods because I just got crazy with the trimming I guess that's probably a normal beginner's mistake so when you go out and you see all the holes and the caps please forgive me <laughs> I have sinned <laughs> so Pretty much what we're gonna do is I left them completely alone. I think I actually did that in the fall. I over trimmed the boxes. I think I did that in the fall of um, 2018 actually. So they've had a full year to kind of recover a little bit, but there are still some gaps. So I'm gonna go in and just try to um, prune away any branches that are crossing, try to generate some more airflow and try not to trim where those holes are, hopefully. Um, and hopefully stimulate some growth to fill it in a little bit and for them to fluff out. They are leafing out right now. It looks, they look really good. So, um, and hopefully I'm going to be able to film because it is crazy windy here, you guys, like insanely. So I don't know, this may not work. It may blow my tripod over, but we're going to try because I really want to try to get this done today. Um, just because it's going to be one of the few nice warm days. I'm sure it'll be nice, but it's gonna get colder, we're having a cold front coming in, so I'm just thinking I should probably get out and do this while I can still wear a short sleeve. I don't know, because it is like 70 degrees despite all of the wind, although it might be super chilly because of the wind, I don't know. Anyway, we're gonna see how this goes. Hopefully I can use this footage, um, but yeah, so stay tuned. Also, premise, I am not a professional boxwood trimmer or really have very, very little knowledge about how to do this, so if you're taking tips from me, Use at your own risk. <laughs> what? What? Do you want to go outside? <laughs> outside? It's windy. Oh my goodness. Hey guys, I'm just jumping in with a little bit of a voice over here to kind of explain the method to my madness. Um, as you see me trim this one boxwood on this side. So um, I'm kind of just giving you an overview here of what I'm dealing with. So as you can see, there are definitely some holes, especially on this side that's closest to the doorway. Um, so, you know, the main thing here that I'm trying to do is really not any excessive pruning because I did prune it so, so hard when we first moved in. Um, as you guys can probably see from those previous photos that I showed you guys in the earlier video, this is way smaller than it was when we came in. Um, it's probably about half the size it was, whereas I'm pretty sure the rule of thumb is that you're not supposed to trim more than a third of the bush's um, size when you're trimming. And we obviously took it down 
we I obviously took it down way more than that so anyway mainly my biggest uh, goal for today was just to go in and only take out as little as possible um, only branches that I thought were maybe inhibiting other branches growth branches I didn't think were needed or didn't have a lot of leaves on them as you can see I'm pulling out some that really don't have a lot of leaves at all so I'm just kind of like trying to kind of give it a little bit of a rejuvenation um, rather than really any excessive pruning so that would be my biggest tip if I had a tip um, which I'm not a super experienced pruner but I would say it's just like hair right you can always cut more but you can never cut less so definitely be conservative if you guys are thinking about trimming your boxwoods just take your time only do a little bit at a time it takes years to get an overgrown boxwood back to its normal size if you want to do it correctly and if you want to keep a healthy plant so I would just say be patient don't be like me <laughs> Well, that was a disaster. <laughs> so I tried to go out and do some pruning on the boxwoods, obviously, like the intro told you. And unfortunately, that did not work out like I expected. I figured that I did take some footage of some pest issues that I've been having, and I just wanted to address it and also talk about what I'm gonna do for the garden as far as pests. Um, because that's definitely something that I know we're going to really struggle with here in the South because we had a super, super mild winter on the East Coast. Um, and so because of that, I know that we're going to struggle with pests really bad. I've already seen aphids on my tulips and I've already noticed that obviously I'll, I'll show you some footage here, but that my petunias have gotten chomped on super bad. Um, and I don't know what it's from, honestly. So I, it looks to me like what a beetle would do, but I feel like no beetles have like gone through that larvae stage yet because I've been digging things up and I've been seeing the beetle larvae. So I don't know what it is. Um, it looks like a bug to me because of the way that it's like, so I don't know if it's caterpillars or what. Um, definitely, if you know what that is in the comments, please let me know because that would be a huge help to me. Um, but I did get some overall just different combatants to various different uh, garden pests and I'm hoping that if I can do this that it will help. And I will say that I've used the first stage of this and already everything looks a lot better. I don't like the damage that I showed you was from last week. I haven't seen any new damage, so I'm thinking that it's working. And then we'll also talk about how to apply all this stuff and hopefully still be respectful to all the good bugs and the good things that happen in the, uh, in the garden, all the good little critters. Uh, yeah, so let me go ahead and show you what I've got. Okay, numero uno. I actually might've already mentioned this in my last video when I was planting gladiolus, um, but, this is the first stage that has already done a, like a huge benefit. I don't think that I've even seen any new damage since I've applied this. So I might not even go in with the second step, but I know that I'm probably gonna need it as the season goes on. But this was the first thing that I did. I actually got this um, for my house plants because I, on it, you can see there, hopefully you can see that. Um, it has weevils on there and I was watering a houseplant one day and a weevil came out. I didn't even know what it was and it literally scared the crap out of me because it was so gross. I love the garden. I don't like insects super much. This is Bug Bonide and it treats all kinds of different insects and it also treats uh, larvae as well. Um, kills listed insects on contact after watering in, um, surface and subsurface so which is really cool because we definitely have a lot of subsurface like larva going on right now i think and i know and beetles are a huge huge problem here um i'm trying to remember what they're called they're called oh japanese beetles japanese beetles are a huge problem i saw them all over my echinacea last year and i didn't do anything about them um they pretty much chomped them to bits but 
at that point in time. Did I do something? Maybe I did do an application of something, um, but I can't really remember. Either way, it was a big, big struggle for me. So I'm really hoping that this will help manage those. Um, and then, so this was the first thing. It says that it does ants, cutworms, crickets, earwigs, grasshoppers, grubs, seed maggots, weevils, and wire worms. Um, so that's a good like overall spread of things. Now with this, you don't wanna apply this anytime that pollinators are gonna be active um, because you don't want them to get in contact with it. So what I would do is I would apply them either like in the evening or like super, super early in the morning before anything comes out. Um, but I try to apply them when I think that I see the least amount of pollinators and in the evenings here is normally that. So that's what I did with this is I went out one evening after work and just shook this all over. And I actually shook this also, so I did it on my petunias. And then I also did it on my tulips because like I said, I saw a ton of aphids on the tulips already, which is crazy to me. I feel like it was like yesterday, freezing cold, so, and they're gone. I mean, I haven't seen any since then, which is huge because I had a huge problem with aphids on my irises last year. So we'll see if this helps a little bit. I will probably reapply this, I don't know, every couple of weeks as I see the insects get worse. And hopefully I can just roll with this. But if I do need a second round of things, I will probably use this guy. So after I saw the aphids, I went ahead and picked this guy up um, from Garden Safe. And it's actually, it says fungicide, but when I was reading it, it does all kinds of different things. It does fungicide, insecticide, and miticide. Um, and it says it controls aphids and white flies, and that's why I went and picked it up. Um, but afterwards, I found the other bonide stuff downstairs, and I was like, oh, let me try this first, rather than hooking this up to the hose. Um, but it looks like it does all kinds of different stuff. Black spot, rust, powdery mildew, aphids, white flies, and then spider mites too, which, by the way, so this leads me into my next thing. I probably will actually use this, I probably will use this maybe, when am I gonna have a chance? Maybe this weekend. And I'm gonna try to spray down my Camilla bush because I noticed, and I think I knew this last year, but I didn't really think much of it and I didn't really care about the Camilla bush too much because I was so busy doing so many other things, um, which is terrible, but I know that that happens. So, it has like all of these, the spider, like they look like spider webs, but they're webs all over the camille bush. And I'm wondering if it's like spider mites or something. And maybe that's why my camille bush didn't do so well. And it had nothing to do with the wind or the cold, like I said earlier in the video. Cause I even commented then, I was like, I don't know what's wrong with my camille bush. Like it, it blooms and then the blooms like rot, you know, and they don't look very good. Um, so I don't know if that's common for Camillas. Maybe that's like, this is a separate issue, but I did notice that there was definitely a lot of webbing on the branches. So I'm definitely gonna give him a good spray down, I think with this and see if that helps because I think that maybe that's what it is. And if that's true, I definitely don't want it spreading to my other plants. So I'm probably gonna go ahead and use this guy. Um, but once again, I will probably do it at night so that we don't harm any of our good friends out there in the garden. Um, number two, um, so of course we don't just deal with bugs. A lot of times, depending on where you live, you also deal with all kinds of other animals, especially if you do vegetable gardening. Um, and so funny enough, because of this whole thing going on with COVID right now, I went out and was going to, I've been working on our back, like the back of our house and working on setting up some um, garden, beds back there but i haven't i haven't finished it completely but i did finish one side and then i decided i was like you know what instead of planting it up with flowers like i had originally intended maybe i'll just go ahead and get some vegetables along with them and plant some flowers and vegetables and you know have kind of like a you know kind of like an impromptu vegetable garden now i've only vegetable garden maybe two or three years before um and it was when i was a teenager so I don't have a ton of experience, but I know a little bit. I know some about the cold water, I mean, um, cold water, the cold weather crops. And then I know some about the summer weather and stuff like that. And, um, but what I remember is, is that the easiest ones that were for us were easiest to grow, um, were tomatoes and strawberries. So I went and picked up some tomatoes and strawberries from a local garden center. Um, 
recently and thankfully they're still open because they do sell stuff. So anyway, I picked those up and as soon as I brought them home, my husband was like, what are you gonna do about the deer? Cause we have really bad deer up, up here in the Shenandoah Valley. And I was like, oh, I hadn't even thought about that. Cause we definitely don't have the money to get a fence. We don't have a fence. Um, there's no way for us to do anything like enclosing it because it's gonna be right up against the house. The bed is, I mean, so you can't really do like, I mean, I guess you could try to do something, but I knew it was going to be super complicated. So I started Googling some stuff and it looks like Bonite actually put out a, another product called Repels All. And it's an animal repellent that you sprinkle and it's, I got the granules kind instead of the spray because I thought it would go farther. Um, but it repels all kinds of animals, if you can see right there. And it says the three pound container covers up to 2,500 square feet. So I feel like that's a lot. And it says it lasts up to two months. So I'm really excited about this. I'm hoping it will help prevent any of my vegetables getting munched up. Um, so we'll see what happens. I'm really hoping that all of these measures will work. I do know that, you know, there's a couple of other products that I might invest in if I have a particular problem with like a particular insect, but I'm glad, I think this was a good start with some of these things. I'll show you kind of so that if you want to do a screenshot or something, what I have, this is what I have. Um, I think these things will work fairly well for what I'm looking to accomplish and they cover a wide variety of different pests. So I just feel like this is probably a good place to start. So anyway, I will definitely give you guys a review as things go forward and like how the garden season goes. If I buy new products, I'll let you guys know. Um, but yeah, I just thought that that would be a good thing to share with you. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, I just wanted to share with you guys what I had purchased and I'll definitely continue to keep you guys updated on how those things work. And please let me know if you guys have any products that have worked for you and you'd like to share with me because I am always, always open to learning. Like I said, I'm still kind of beginning in this. So hopefully we'll grow and learn together and just share. And that's like really what I came onto YouTube for is just to find more garden friends. So that's super exciting. Please leave me a comment down below. And if you liked it, like and subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.